Hey, welcome everyone uh, this, uh, to this week's Facebook Live. My name is Shalini Joshi Amdagni. And if you are brand new here, welcome. Uh, if you're joining me live, please come in and say hello. Um, and if you are watching on replay, please let me know you were here. Leave some comments. Uh, today, um, the topic that I'm going to be sharing with you is a very interesting one. It's pin painful pitfalls of impatience and tips and tools to practice patience. <laughs> and uh, hi, Jeffrey. Uh, so nice to see you here live. So, you know, um, painful pitfalls of impatience and what we are going to look at today. This is what's coming up today, just for a quick uh, heads up. So I'm sharing about marathon and marshmallow test. Uh, impatience sabotages uh, success, tips to practice patience, and some questions you want to ask yourself. And it's interesting, five minutes before I was getting ready to do this call, all this construction noise started, and I was feeling very impatient. <laughs> and I frantically you know, went around, uh, I, I live in a, in a condo, and uh, you know, my neighbor is uh, doing some uh, renovations, and I've asked them, please don't have any uh, activity, drilling activity uh, going on at this time, and they're very cooperative, but it seems today there is some construction going on in the condo above me, and I've had no chance to talk to them, so you will hear some drilling, some banging, and it is so loud in my living room that I had to breathe and come into my kitchen and hopefully uh, it, it's gonna work fine. So I got, got a taste of practicing patience myself and uh, apologies for all the, the noises that you're probably hearing in the background. So um, I, got a, I got a taste of my own medicine. So, uh, you know, I, it, in this day and age, everything that, uh, you know, it's, it's the lifestyle is an instant lifestyle, right? You have instant downloads, instant messaging, instant coffee, instant messages. Uh, everything is on, uh, on an instant, um, you know, pace. And so it's so different from... Uh, you know, when we were growing up, when I was a kid, uh, I was in a boarding school, and uh, I remember we were back, you know, then it was the age of the airmail, and I would wait for weeks to receive my parents' uh, letters uh, that were airmailed from Bangkok to you know, to, to India, and you know, they lived in a little town uh, Ayutthaya, near Ayutthaya, here in Thailand, and they had to drive to the post office to send the mail, and then, you know, uh, and then it would read me, uh, reach me, and uh, you, uh, even for my birthdays, I remember I would be waiting for birthday cards that were uh, mailed to me, and sometimes I would get them on time. That would be a miracle, and many times I would get them either before or after because you never knew right like when would this happen and so waiting and patience was kind of part of the deal because the system was set up that way and we just you know we you you, you just adapt to the system right so it wasn't impatient so much like I knew okay maybe I'll get it tomorrow or I'll get the birthday card a day before um, and that that was life uh, you know when I was growing up and today I just message and you can just FaceTime and wish birthdays and it's so this the way we are set up today uh, we expect instant results right it's if, if something doesn't download you know how you feel like it should be downloading right away and why is it uh, taking so long to for the for the you know to, for the site to open and I'm sure you can re relate a million examples of how we are in an age of instant and so it's also an age of impatience right and so I wanted to share with you um, and you know one of the things is that instant is not bad 
right? Instant is not bad. Instant is wonderful. You can instantly contact your, your parents. You know, you can instantly send messages. Instant is a good thing. It's just when, you know, there's pitfalls of every, every situation that you're in. Uh, the pitfalls of, you know, patience back then was I, I, I didn't get my birthday cards on the right day and I felt so sad and I felt so bad. And so instant has its, uh, its wonderful place. It's just, you know, when we start reacting negatively and we get, uh, you know, we, we live in that state of impatience, that's when problems happen. And so uh, the point number one, marathon and marshmallow test. So you've heard that, you know, it may sound cliche, but it is a fact that life is not a sprint. It is a marathon. And when I was in my boarding school, one of my best, uh, you know, uh, study subject was sports. Uh, I was a sprinter. I was a 70 meter sprinter and, um, you know, I always got either second place, sometimes first place or third place, and I loved uh, running. But once uh, they asked me to substitute for a 400 meter uh, race. And you know, the, the tools that you apply in a sprint are so different than the skills you need for a marathon, right? Or for, for a 400 meter uh, uh, race. And so it's, it's, it's important to realize that life is not a sprint, right? And if we are thinking in terms of all of us with our dreams and our goals and all the things that we want to achieve in our relationships, in our lifestyle, in our, there goes the, there goes the drilling. I'm sorry about that. Um, uh, and this room is the quieter one. So that's why I'm here uh, and I'm breathing and being patient. Uh, and you know so the there are so many things we want to achieve and it's not going to happen in an instant it's not a sprint and you need a whole different skills uh, to run the marathon of life and the marshmallow experiment uh, was test was a test that was done by stanford university uh, in the 1960s and 70s, and it was actually a series of studies that were done. And what what, what happened is, uh, small little kids were, you know, brought to a room, and they were given a marshmallow, uh, sometimes a marshmallow, maybe a cookie or a pretzel, and they were left by the, you know, the person, and they they were given a, a plate with one marshmallow, and they said, "Here's a marshmallow, and you can eat it, but." If you wait, then, um, you know, I'll come back and give you another one. So a bunch of uh, tests were done. And if, if you can Google it, Google it. It's really cute. These kids looking at the marshmallow and some licking it, some sniffing it. And some just, you know, they couldn't resist it. So they would take a bunch of bites and then um, it, it's, it's wonderful to watch. But what they, what they did is they did follow-up studies of these people and they found that the ones that did wait, that did, you know, stick it out, uh, they had different lifestyle measures, whether it was SAT scores or, uh, you know, the, the body mass index or the income or something like that. They had different lifestyle measures and they found that the, the kids who waited and who were patient, you know, were had more successful lifestyles and so you know talking about uh where are we impatience sabotages success so whatever your goals are whether they're health goals fitness goals relationship goals uh you know um, money goals or even self-improvement goals whatever whatever your goals are travel goals you know when we have certain expectations, right, we, we take action and we have certain expectations and then, you know, we, we are not able to meet those expectations. And so we, we feel, uh, you know, we feel discouraged, we get impatient and we may take actions that are, uh, you know, that we were not supposed to take 
I will, I'm calling them premature actions. So um, we, we experience, you know, when we are impatient, we have lack of mental peace. We don't like clarity. We find we are, you know, you know, saying mean things instantly because we are, we are, we are in that impatient mood. And so we might blurt off uh, some mean comments and, you know, uh, and our behavior is aggressive. And that mean comment then, you know, uh, it, it, it uh, tars, uh, whether it's a relationship with a staff, a boss, your child, your, your spouse, right so you experience disharmony in relationships um, you're making rash, rash decisions because you're taking premature action and and you're not action uh, you're not taking action from a place of peace and calm and clarity you're impatient and you're frustrated and you're angry and you're you're upset and those are not good you know energies to be in when you're taking action then it leads to the cycle of guilt and shame. I shouldn't have done that. What the heck was I thinking? Regrets, regrets, regrets. Okay. And when you're acting from impatience, uh, of course, you're not acting from a place of clarity. So you, you know, your performance, whether it's in a relationship, whether it's at a job, whether it's whatever, uh, it, it slows down, right? It could be even health related. You're expecting to lose this much weight and gosh, this is taking forever. And, and so you just want to give up or you start eating like it doesn't matter because no matter what I do, it's not, uh, it's not working. And that leads to so, uh, you know, low self image, low self esteem. Uh, you kind of tend to dismiss all the things that you've accomplished so far. Maybe you've come 90% of the way and there's just a 10% that's left. And uh, I don't know who it was that says that most people give up when they're just about to have their breakthroughs, but because of impatience, right? Uh, I remember uh, the, 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 the game of cricket comes to my mind. I don't know why, but you know, when, when those batters, they get sick of doing the, the slow batting and they get frustrated because the goals are not coming in and then they do one, uh, they, they hit, uh, without thinking because they are impatient and they get, get caught and then they're out. Um, so in so many areas of our lives, we, uh, you know, get impatient and we block ourselves, right? And we sabotage our success when, when we are really, really that close to getting to our goals. We, we go through this cycle of impatience which leads to so many other um, problems and eventually we sabotage our success in our health, in our relationships, in our uh, work productivity, in the projects that we've got going. So it is, you know, um, a vicious cycle. And uh, here is what are some of the tips, right, to recognize, uh, to practice patience recognize your impatience and that is just uh, an act of being mindful you know we have different triggers i know the, the the next the third point is know your triggers but when you know you're going to get triggered and what are our usual you know usual suspects we you know traffic and airline delays and bad service and rejection and delays in project or unexpected things happening uh, unresponsive client customer uh, service I don't know these are some common things that came to my head when I was thinking and and so you know the things that trigger you maybe you don't get triggered by uh, traffic uh, but you do get uh, triggered by unexpected changes like what the heck I wasn't expecting this and then you get all impatient because you had this goal and you had this plan and something unexpected happened and, and it throws you off balance and you start feeling impatience and, and, and all, all that stuff, right? So get out of your head and get into your body. What does that mean? That means when you're feeling impatient, stop this over analysis and overthinking and get into your body. And, uh, you know, when you're in your body, you are present. So, uh, you know, Usually, like I did just before this, this noise started is, so now my focus is on the breathing instead of all this stuff that's going on in my head. 
right? You need to get out of your head because in your head you're saying, it should have been this way. Why the heck is it taking so long? Uh, I didn't expect this. And, uh, you know, this means that it's never going to happen and blah, 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 blah. Never ending, uh, you know, uh, never ending chain of negative thinking. So get out of your head and get into your body. Take a couple of deep breaths. It's not the standard, pros uh, you know, you, you, something else might work for you. I'm just sharing what works for me. And then I usually tend to tap into self-help toolbox. I do tapping and I find a way to calm down. There could be different things. You know, maybe uh, you can, uh, you know, maybe it's music. Maybe it's getting out of the house and going for a walk and just clearing your head. Use whatever tools you have uh, in your toolbox and get creative, you know, like, okay, I'm stuck at the airport right now and, uh, and my flight has been delayed and was really urgent and I had to get that to that meeting and it's not working out. What can I do right now? When you are out of that state of impatience and in a place of calm, so many creative ideas will pop up, you know, that uh, that will surprise you and support you in moving through that that uncomfortable out of comfort zone phase right it could be listening to music it could be reading a book i don't know what ticks you i, I like to carry books in my in my bags or, or I'll, I'll always have i'll never miss my earphones because then i can log into youtube i can watch my favorite things to watch and i feel like I'm spending my time, uh, you know, in a, in, a, in, a, in a good way. And so what is, you know, what does your toolbox consider? Tap into that, build that toolbox, and make sure, you know, you have uh, some tools available to you that work for you in case of unexpected changes, delays, waits, traffic jams, whatever your triggers are, okay? And remember the big picture. Remember the big picture. Remember, go back to your why. Why am I doing this? Why is this health goal important? What do I really want to achieve? Because, you know, life is a marathon. It's not a sprint. So just this, this, you know, in this continuum of life, it's just a little, it's just a little uh, time period that you're experiencing this. But what do you really want? Go back to that bigger perspective that you have for yourself, for your life, for what you want, for your desires. When you go back to that, this little uncomfortable, irritating uh, situation will look puny, right? So get perspective, get a different, a broader perspective. Surrender to what is. And this is so important and so hard to practice because you know, so, you know, people tend to think that impatience is about being lazy, being, uh, being not taking action. And, you know, what I feel is that, uh, that there's a difference between, you know, people think that if you're not, if you're, in, if you're not, uh, if you're patient, then you don't have any expectations or you, you don't care. And I don't see it like that. I see it as I have, you know, you know, I tell my clients have the highest expectations, right? Have your biggest goals, have very uh, out of the box expectations for yourself, for your life, because what you expect you get, but expect setbacks. Part of the, part of the, Part of the journey, expect setbacks. I'm in a group of, uh, you know, um, I'm mentoring with, uh, with uh, Dr. Joe Vitale from The Secret, and we have a mastermind group together. And, you know, he recently wrote a book called Anything is Possible. Anything is possible, expect lots of wonderful things, but expect setbacks. So when I'm talking about impatience, I'm not saying you know, uh, or being patient, I'm not saying have no expectations. That's not me. You know, I, I don't relate to that. I believe that, we, you know, we have to have great expectations, but don't be attached and expect setbacks because 
sometimes life doesn't go the way you want it to go. I say when it's not going your way, it's when it's not going according to your plan, it's going according to a divine plan. So surrender to what is you you have those amazing expectations you're taking actions and something happens and it's not working you know analyze it and do whatever do your bit but you know sur surrender to what is go with the flow surrender to what is is basically going with the flow okay this is where i am right now i was meant to go for that trip but somebody felt sick and this is where I am. And instead of being angry and impatient, like I was supposed to be there, I was supposed to do this, you're not being present. And the present is that you're supposed to take care of the sick person. And that's what life wants you to do right now. So uh, surrender to what is. And that does not mean give up your expectations. That does not mean don't have desires. Okay, that's, that's the way I see it. And look for the deeper meaning of things. This is so important. Look for the deeper meaning of what is the purpose of your current situation? Is there a lesson here? Is there a hidden gift here? Uh, because in my opinion, there's no randomness. There's no randomness in the universe. That's just me. That's just the way I believe things are in flow and, and there's a divine, you know, divine course and you are on course even though sometimes it looks like you're not on course and you were supposed to be uh, in that country doing that thing right now because that was your plan but now you're stuck taking care of your sick child or your sick spouse or parent and <clears throat> that is part of the plan so surrender to what is and and look for the deeper meaning of where you are and what what your situation is right now so some of the, so here's, here's a look at the tips again. Recognize your impatience, become aware, okay, five minutes before this Facebook Live started, I'm thinking, this is crazy, I'm feeling impatient, I have to be on this call, I have to do this live session, and they've started drilling, oh my God, I'm, you know, so I have to shift all my cards and, and my computer to my kitchen, and, and, and so what, right? And this is this was my less, lesson in patience. What's the deeper, deeper meaning? Uh, maybe this is just perfect, right? And so recognize your impatience. Get out of your body. Know your triggers. Know that okay, if the flight is delayed, I usually get pissed. So what can I do? Do I have my headphones? Do I have a book? Can I watch something that that's funny? You know. Uh, know your triggers, tap into your self-help tool, uh, self toolbox, remember the big picture, surrender to what is, and look for the deeper meaning, okay? Uh, and here are some questions you may want to reflect on, and these are, in which area of your life, of life do I need to be more patient? Is it health? Maybe I've been struggling with health and fitness and losing weight and I'm not getting there. I'm not getting there. I'm not getting there. I've had some success, but I'm not getting to that place. Maybe I'm sick and tired of being in pain. A lot of my clients are sick and tired of being in pain and they want to give up because they tried acupuncture. They tried physiotherapy. I tried all of these and hot packs and cold packs and this is not working and the doctors can't figure it out. I have a client in my private um, Facebook group where I do weekly, um, you know, daily Facebook lives who, who's diagnosed with tinnitus and she's not getting the relief and, you know, it's, it's, you feel impatient and, and, and uh, you think you're stuck, but you're not, right? So in which area am I being impatient or am I, you know, uh, feeling frustrated? What am I afraid of? What am I afraid that will happen if I stop, if I, if I become patient? What am I afraid? I'll lose out, I'll be stuck, I won't get the results, I don't know. What are the things that you're feeling afraid of? And what if I could let go of this fear? Who would I be if I didn't have this fear? What would happen if I let it go? And what if I could relax more about this situation? What if I could relax into life? I say to a lot of my clients, like, what if you relaxed into life? What if you trusted that life is working 
for you, not against you? What if you allowed, uh, you know, life to to unfold, and you, you know, you um, stayed uh, more patient because patience means more peaceful, means more productive, right? Because when you are patient, then you're at peace. When you're impatient, you lack peace. And some of amount of impatience is good, but when you're thinking of long-term goals and, and you know things that are not instant, you can't lose weight in an instant, you can't get the dream job in an instant, you can't get your dream uh, partner in an instant, right? These things take time. And so in that case, patience will produce uh, peace, will create more peace, will create more clarity, which eventually will make better decisions, better solutions, more inspiration, right? And eventually leading to success in whatever it is that you are looking for. So, uh, you know, that was, that was uh, the, my little thing on um, the pitfalls of impatience and uh, tips and tools to practice patience. And I say practice patience specifically because people think patience is an innate gift and it's not it's another skill that we need to practice like gratitude is you know we take things for granted but we need to practice gratitude like a skill and even in the case of impatience what if we could practice gratitude right and um see all the amazing things that are working out in our lives that are going well and, and focus on that. That also helps shift uh, perspective from you know, our state of impatience. So thank you for joining me. I hope that was helpful. Hi, Shelly. Uh, hi, hello, Rajiv, uh, Brian, Hari Raj, Jonathan, hello, Swanand, uh, Kirkire, hi, uh, Ritu Gulari, Ashlam, Shafiq, Thank you guys for joining in live. I hope you got something out of it. Uh, feel free to come in and say, um, you know, drop in some comments if something resonated with you. And uh, I'm going to put the link above to my private Facebook group that I do um, every day. I'm, uh, I'm going live there almost every day. And we're doing tapping and helping uh, people move from pain to peace. And if that res resonates with you, if you are in a state of impatience and you feel like I can't do this on my own and you need support, be sure to click on the link above that I'm going to put uh, right after I finish this. And I will see you in my next Facebook Live. So bye, guys, and have a great weekend coming up. And I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.